Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today I want to talk to you about choosing suspension when it comes to electric bikes. Now for anyone who's buying an electric bike there are a lot of different decisions you have to make but one of the tricky ones can be related to suspension. Do you need it? How much? Which kind? These are tricky questions so that's what I want to talk to you about today. Let's dive into it. Now first of all I've got three different bikes here that represent the three main different suspension options out there in the market. First we'll start over here. This is the M2S or Mountain to Sea M600 bike. It's a full suspension, all-terrain bike. Full suspension meaning it's got a suspension fork up front and it's got suspension here for the rear wheel. So both the front and the rear have suspension. Here in the middle, we've got the 500 series from Ride One Up. And this is known as a hardtail, meaning it's got a rigid rear end here, but it's got a suspension fork up front. So you've only got suspension in the front part of the bike. The last option that I've got here, this is the Propella V3.2, and this has no suspension at all. It's a hardtail and it's got no suspension fork. So here, all you have is a rigid frame. So these are the three main options you're gonna see in the market. There are some bikes out there that have just suspension in the rear and no suspension fork, but they're usually sort of odd bikes. They're often folding bikes and they, they don't fit into the normal categories. So these are the main three types we're gonna see. So now I wanna talk about each option. Over here, we've got the M2S M600. And full suspension bikes, the advantage is basically the comfort and the handling. There's really nothing that compares to a full suspension bike when it comes to comfort. You've got that nice suspension fork up front and you've got uh, rear suspension. So anything you hit, whether it's with the front wheel or the rear wheel, you're gonna have that nice dampening. It's just gonna make your ride so much nicer. If you're gonna be doing lots of commuting and street riding, whether or not you need that is, is sort of a personal question. If you're doing a lot of off-road and definitely some more technical terrain, full suspension is almost a must. You can certainly do off-road riding with just a hardtail, but the more technical you get and the better handling you want, you're gonna to wanna to start looking at a full suspension e-bike. The downside here, or the, the biggest downsides, are usually going to be the increased price and the increased weight. This bike is $3,000, and that is not a cheap e-bike. To be fair, it's got some really nice parts on it, and this is good suspension, but you're always gonna find that full suspension e-bikes are gonna be more expensive. There are cheap options out there, but when you get into really cheap full suspension bikes, the suspension is, it's basically crap. Lots of times you'll see just a, uh, a cheap spring back here and the front fork will be, I mean, it looks like you can break it over your knee. Stay away from really cheap full suspension bikes. If you're looking at a cheap full suspension bike, you'd be better off buying either a hardtail or a entirely rigid bike because cheap suspensions, it's just gonna fall apart on you. And even while it's working, the handling's not great. So if you're looking at a full suspension e-bike, be prepared to pay a decent amount of money. You're probably not gonna find a good one for under 2,000, and 3,000 is where they really start to have good components like RockShox suspension and hydraulic suspension, and this is the area where you're really gonna enjoy the bike. So now let's move on to the hardtails. So this is the 500 series from Ride One Up, and the advantage with a hardtail is that you get some of the suspension from a full suspension bike, so you get some of that comfort in the front end, but you don't have the increased cost and the increased weight of a full suspension bike. One of the bigger contributors to the cost of a full suspension bike is really the rear suspension, because that's where things get complicated and they get more technical. If all you have to do is put a suspension fork up front, the bike is definitely gonna be a lot cheaper, and you're gonna be able to get away with a cheaper, lighter e-bike. Now, personally, this is probably my favorite type of bike, just a hardtail front suspension bike, because it gives me that nice Goldilocks solution. For a commuter bike, whenever I'm hitting curbs or potholes or something, I can have the nice absorption in the front, and I just make sure that I'm sort of lifting up in the saddle a little bit for the rear if I see that I'm gonna hit something pretty big with the uh, rear of the bike. When I'm off-road, that's the, that's the time that I'm often wishing that I had rear suspension if I'm on a hardtail bike. But again, if you lift up out of the saddle and you kind of float above it a little bit and you use your knees as a bit of suspension, you can kind of make up for the fact that you don't have rear suspension. It's definitely not the same as being able to just like bounce and, and feel like you're on a cloud with a full suspension bike, but you get part of the way there by sort of doing your own DIY rear suspension with your legs. It's not a great solution, but it'll save you a lot of money. This bike is $1,200, which to be honest, this bike has huge value. Like it should really cost more than that. But you can see the big difference in price when you move from $3,000 to $1,200. Of course, there are other component differences. We've got hydraulic brakes over here. We've got a mid-drive motor, a very nice uh, M600 mid-drive motor. We've got larger tires. Uh, obviously, there's the rear suspension. 
but it's just a whole different class of bike when you're looking at these uh, more budget-friendly hardtail bikes. So this is really the Goldilocks solution in my opinion. You get some uh, suspension, some dampening up front. It's definitely nice for the wrists, but you're kind of doing your own thing on the rear. Lastly, let's look at the uh, non-suspension bikes. So this is the Propella V3.2, and this is a nice bike. It's very affordable. It's $999, but there's absolutely no suspension, and it's not the most comfortable bike. You, if you look as well, you've got these really nar narrow tires on it, and so not only is there no suspension, but you don't even get a lot of uh, cushioning from the tires. So when I'm riding this bike, I'm really doing all of the suspension myself. I'm trying to stay out of the saddle anytime I see a bump, and I'm really trying to have you know loose elbows, loose knees, and give myself the best ride I can because the bike is doing you no favors. That doesn't mean it's not a good bike. It's nice and affordable, it's lightweight. The thing's like uh, 34 pounds, I think, 34 and a half. So it's really lightweight. I mean, I can lift it with one finger here. So I definitely can't do that with these other two. So there are big advantages to going with a uh, entirely rigid bike, but comfort is not one of them. If you're commuting in the city and you know you're gonna be on nice smooth bike lanes or bike paths, or you do a lot of um, sidewalk riding where you don't have big like um, differences in curbs. I used to live in Boston and there with all the, the frost heaving and roots growing under sidewalks, the sidewalks are almost more dangerous than the streets in terms of obstructions. But if you're riding in an area that has really nice smooth paths, you can probably get away with a bike like this. You'll save weight, you'll save money, and you'll have a nice bike. Other than the lack of suspension here, you know, this is a really nice bike that works well. It's got a decently powerful motor and it's otherwise comfortable. But I always know when I hop on these bikes that it's up to me to absorb those bumps and really stay nice and loose on the bike because even hitting something like a speed bump on these, it'll just rock you right out of the saddle if you are just sitting on it and you're not paying attention. So I'm not a huge fan of rigid uh, non-suspension bikes like this. There's a place for them, they're affordable, they're lightweight, but like I mentioned, I think this is where I like to spend most of my time with the hardtails. And when I can, man, I love a nice full suspension bike. These are just so much fun and you can do so many more things on them. You can hit jumps and you can go on really technical trails and the whole ride is just so much more comfortable. So if you can afford it and you can also afford the extra weight that goes with these bikes, this could be a nice solution. But at the end of the day, it's totally up to you and what you need. You've got your affordable lightweight options, you've got your mid-range sort of comfortable options, and you've got your I'm riding on a cloud and this bike feels amazing options, but they cost you. So it's all about what you want in your e-bike. All right, I hope that gave you a little more insight into uh, how you should think about suspension and uh, how it applies to your particular commute or what you want to do with your bike, whether it's commuting or recreation, and I hope that you found that helpful. Last but not least, I just want to announce the winner of the giveaway from my last video, and the randomly selected commenter is... Lord Wilson Villa. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like, either DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or Electric Motorcycles. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books, all you have to do is put a comment below this video, and hopefully you will be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And if you don't want to wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.